So the Fed recently dropped some major, very significant warnings for American families. And I really hope that you guys are paying attention to what's going on here. And uh, unfortunately, we're seeing a lot of the lower income families being hit first. And uh, it's a little bit concerning the number of people that I'm, I'm having reached out to me indicating their current financial standing. And, you know, we've been talking about families being potentially wiped out, food shortages, diesel prices heading higher, how diesel prices are going to be affecting uh, the cost of food and basic essentials that the average American struggles to pay for. Now, of course, you know, the higher you are on the economic ladder, the less that this is going to affect you. So I'll give you a good example. So. You know, we were talking about how inflation is literally like a tax on the poor. Inflation is a uh, it's really a tax on lower income Americans. And it's a tax on really any income level that is in a situation where they're living paycheck to paycheck. And I'll give you a great example. So, you know. Whenever diesel prices head higher, you're going to see higher gas prices. Whenever you see diesel prices or diesel shortages or diesel affects everything because everything is transported via diesel if it's a physical asset. So if it's a physical product, any type of physical item is delivered at some point in time via diesel driven vehicle or truck. So fuel, regular gas being delivered by a diesel trucker, this is going to drive up the cost of the fuel that's being delivered. So even though it's diesel that's going up in price, unleaded gas is going up because the gas station that's paying to have the fuel delivered so that they can ultimately sell it to consumers like me and you, it's it's got a higher shipping fee. It's got a higher shipping cost. So their cost per per gallon is going to be higher. Now, why does this matter? Well, everything that you're paying for in the stores is transported by by diesel driven trucks, right? So that means that everything will continue to go higher. We're seeing Fed Chair Jerome Powell raising interest rates at an alarming rate, and they're attempting to tame inflation. But here's the thing. A lot of people have a very uh, skewed misconception in terms of what this is actually going to do for the American people. And the warnings are everywhere. We're seeing the warning signs. And even if Fed, you know, even if the Federal Reserve were to get the inflation rate under control, a lot of people have this misconception that prices are going to go down. And this is this is so far from the truth. Prices are never going to go down for a lot of a lot of items that you're paying for each and every single day. Now, of course, you'll see moderate, you know, swings in prices in terms of fuel. You're always going to see a swing in fuel because you've got investors and traders on the stock market and on the commodities commodities exchanges that are literally trading the oil and gas contracts, which a lot of people don't even realize. A lot of times you've got diesel and gas prices being manipulated by traders, hedge funds, uh, anyone with a an account uh, on different types of uh, commodities trading platforms. And me personally, I don't trade commodities, but I know a lot of people who do. And these platforms may be in the form of uh, maybe interactive brokers, for example. Um, I'm trying to think of some other some platforms that where you can trade commodities. But basically, a, a quick Google search on a quick Google search of what trading platforms can I, you know, invest or trade oil contracts, fuel contracts, gas contracts, diesel contracts, whatever the case is. These traders are trading in the billions of dollars, some of them. Now, people like me and you, you know, maybe a couple thousand dollars, maybe a hundred thousand dollars, who knows? But these, oh, and as a matter of fact, you've got airline companies. These companies, you've got airline companies like Delta, uh, FedEx. Now, FedEx is not an airline company, but they've got a lot of airlines. Companies like Amazon, companies like any company that either heavily relies on 
air delivery of their products or they're in the transportation business leveraging airlines, they're likely going to be using airlines to uh, they're using oil and gas contracts to keep their costs lower. It's kind of like a hedge against these higher prices. But here's the thing. Americans at the lower income price bracket, Americans at the lower income bracket are being most affected by this because there's no breathing room. And like I said, if you're on the higher income ladder, you are more insulated from these problems. You're more insulated because you had more income to allocate to these higher prices. Now, let's just say you're higher income. If you're higher income, but you're still living paycheck to paycheck, you're no better off than a low income earner who had no disposable monies beyond their basic living essentials. So it's like if you're low income or if you're high income, but you have found yourself in a situation where you're living paycheck to paycheck, you're in the lower rungs of the ladder. So the, the goal here is to get higher up on the ladder so that when these inflationary changes occur in the form and they display themselves in the form of higher prices, if you're higher up on the ladder and the water starts coming up, you're less affected. And if you can get high enough on the ladder, you realize that there are problems down below, but you're not as affected. And so this kind of brings me to a point where, you know, one person asked me in a previous video, well, why don't you, um, why don't you promote investing in gold? Why don't you promote investing in silver? I never hear you say anything about investing in gold or investing in silver. And I'm going to be very honest with you guys. I just don't personally feel like the average American needs to invest in gold or silver. Now, a lot of people are probably going to disagree with me, and that's fine. You can let, let me know what you feel about investing in gold or investing in silver in the comments down below. But me personally, I don't feel like that is the best use of your resources for the average American to invest in gold or silver. Why? Well, think about it like this. Whenever I invest in anything, I always ask myself, what is the goal of the investment? You know, am I trying to prepare myself and prepare my family for financial and economic collapse? Okay, well, what good will gold do if there is a significant drop in the value of the U.S. dollar? That, that would probably be my first question. So let's just say that there's a significant crash of the U.S. dollar. If I'm invested in gold, is this really going to help my family? Or, and then, and, or could I invest in a different type of asset? Now, I'm not saying don't invest in gold. I'm not saying don't invest in silver. I'm just saying, why don't I, you know, because someone had asked me in a previous video, and you can probably go through the previous comments and find it because it was a very recent video. I don't remember his name and I wish I saved it. But why don't I promote it? It's just because, you know, why would I push that knowing it's probably not the best move for the average American. Now, you've got Fed Chair Jerome Powell raising interest rates. You've got housing affordability becoming less and less affordable thanks to the higher cost of borrowing money in the form of a mortgage to be able to purchase a home. So most people buy a home based on the fact that they can afford a mortgage payment. So if the Fed is raising interest rates and this is forcing mortgage rates to become more and more expensive. This is driving up the cost of living. It is driving up the cost of borrowing money to buy a home to be able to afford a mortgage. So if I told, you know, so how is buying gold going to help me if I'm in that situation where I'm trying to get into a house? How is buying gold or silver going to help me if I'm struggling to pay for my rent? I would rather invest my money into the type of investment that will pay me some form of income. Gold is not going to pay me any type of passive income or active income. Investing in silver is not going to pay me any type of passive income or active income. It's just not going to do it. Now, if you are a trader of commodities, if you're trading gold or if you're trading silver, now that's a different story. But now you're putting your capital at risk. So it's kind of like, okay, if you're going to if you know how to buy and sell gold, if you can buy gold low and sell it high, now you've made a profit. 
But unless you're doing that, and most people who are looking at buying gold are looking to protect their their currency because they're concerned about the value of whatever currency they're holding, whether it's euros or dollars. So do I invest in gold? Would I invest in gold? I think it really depends on your situation. But for most people, I think it would be smarter if I'm trying to prepare my family for whatever type of economic circumstances coming my way, I would be focused on the types of investments that could potentially pay me rather than buying gold and letting it sit there and not pay me. In most cases, gold and silver is not going to pay you. All it is is likely to uh, at best preserve your purchasing power. But the problem with gold and silver in a lot of cases is, you know, a lot of people are kind of thinking, well, you know, worse, worse comes to worse. I can take my gold to Walmart. I can take my gold to Publix. I can take my gold to Costco, Sam's Club, BJ's, you name it, and buy something. Well, in an economic collapse, I would beg to differ. I would beg to differ. We would have to have such a calamity that walking into a traditional big box retail store and them accepting your gold bar or gold coin or silver co silver coin as a method of payment, uh, we would have to be in such a tremendous economic collapse at that point that that would even be accepted. You walk into a, <laughs> I wish someone would walk into a Costco today or walk into a Walmart today with a basket full of groceries and try to go pay for them with some gold coins or a gold bar or, or, you know, a sack full of silver. That cashier, if you can even find a cashier, if you can even find a human cashier, you'd probably be stuck at a checkout, uh, self checkout, and there's no slot for your gold brick. There's no slot for your gold bar. So you'll probably have to flag down a attendant who can help you out at the self-checkout. And they're going to be as clueless as you are. They're going to be looking at the screen like, OK, so there's an option for EBT. There's an option for credit cards. There's an option for cash. But I don't see an option on the screen to uh, accept this gold bar that the customer has. So, uh you know, I, I'm not going to say don't invest in gold. I'm not going to say don't invest in silver. I'm just saying whenever you're looking to invest in anything, you need to look at what's your return on investment. What is your goal? Um, you know, so I got another comment that indicated that he was this person, this uh, individual had commented and he said that he was going to have to move in with his brother. And I thought that that was actually a brilliant idea. And the reason why is, uh, and it sounded like he was kind of down about it, but he said that he wanted to move in with his brother because he needed to reduce his expenses and so did his brother. So they teamed up and they moved in to, with, with one another. I don't know who moved in with who, but the point is, is now they live under one roof and it would be no different than most people moving back in with their parents, right? And I think it could be one of the smartest moves ever. I mean, right now, right now could literally be one of the smartest things for most people to move in with someone else that you can, uh, you know, if you could both live under the same roof and not, you know, harm each other and actually put a plan together, you could literally cut your living expenses potentially in half if you split it down the middle, you know, and now all of a sudden you could potentially be saving and investing at a rate that is significantly higher and faster than you ever could. I mean, just think about it. If you could just cut your living expenses in half, maybe you're paying $2,000 a month for living expenses. Imagine you only had to pay $1,000. Now you have an extra $1,000 every single month that you could save or invest with. You could build that emergency fund so that when crap does hit the fan, you're ready. You and your family are prepared. But not a lot of people are willing to make that sacrifice. Not a lot of people are willing to get out of their comfort zone to set their family up for success. And that's 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 a problem that we're seeing with a lot of families today. And, you know, people are they're living paycheck to paycheck, higher gas prices, uh, lower, reduced number of hours in the retail sector. Uh, we we're seeing layoffs being reported from a number of large companies, including Walmart, Shopify. Um, I think Coinbase indicated that they were doing some layoffs. Uh, Redfin's doing layoffs. Amazon is laying off certain 
positions. Heck, Twitter. Elon Musk recently purchased Twitter, and I think that there were there was a report that came out not too long ago indicating that more than half of the Twitter staff is likely to be just, you know, just cut. So the question is, are you in a position right now at your company where your job is safe? I mean, if your job is safe, maybe you don't have anything to worry about. But I'm pretty sure that the people at Twitter thought that their jobs were safe until the unexpected happened. And that is where a lot of people get they get caught off guard. They get caught off guard by the unexpected. They get caught off guard by what I call the unknown unknowns. You see, you have known knowns. Those are things you know about and those are things that you are familiar with. So it's kind of like a known known problem would be, I know I have a problem with, with my vehicle. There's a check engine light, but I know what's causing it. I know it's going to take to fix it, but I could keep driving this car um, it, it, the problem is not a safety related issue and it's not going to leave me stranded. So basically let's say your check engine light comes on, you know, you need a new O2 sensor. Okay, fine. So the emissions probably won't pass, but you're good on emissions. You can keep driving for another, you know, several thousand miles and probably never even have a problem. So that's a known known. A known unknown would be, Hey, I have a, this weird sound on the car. And I don't know where it's coming from and I don't know what it's going to take to fix it. So you, that's a known unknown. So you know there's a problem, but you don't know what it's going to take to fix it. Then you have unknown unknowns. And this is the situation I'm describing right now. Twitter employees, probably many of them probably thought that they were doing just fine. And it doesn't have to be Twitter. It could be any company. But I'm using Twitter as an example because this kind of came out of the this kind of came from left field because, number one, a lot of people thought that Elon Musk was going to back out of the Twitter deal, but it didn't happen. He ended up going through with the Twitter deal. And so now that he's a the owner of Twitter and he's coming in to clean house, it's like, wow, I didn't see that coming. Right. And so now what happens? Right. So all these people who probably worked at Twitter for 10 years or more thought their jobs were safe. They're in really good positions. They're earning good salaries. Income is good. 401ks are straight. Well, maybe not the 401k lately, but you guys get my drift, right? So companies, mergers and acquisitions take place all the time. Companies buy other companies. And this is one of the reasons why I like to invest in uh, I like to invest in a number of different types of stocks, number of different types of companies. And the reason why is because basic economics indicates that some companies are just not going to make it. I mean, look at Blockbuster, look at Lehman Brothers, look at any company, Hummer, look at any company that used to exist that was a dominant force in an industry that's no longer here today, right? Any company, look at Pontiac, look at Saturn. I'm naming all these car companies because I'm a car guy. But the thing is, is like it happens with all sorts of businesses and companies. So if you're in a situation where you think your job is safe, you could wake up one morning and then all of a sudden this is like, yo, uh, why is my badge not working? I can't get in the building. You know, this could happen to anyone. So it's like you got to prepare, even if you think you're good. You got to be prepared for the unknown unknowns. And so anyway, I just want to kind of share this information with you guys. I'm going to leave some links for you guys in the description down below. Uh, I'm getting more and more people hit me up, uh, you know, through the different social platforms, email and whatnot, looking for ways to increase their income for their families, looking for higher interest rate savings bank accounts for their emergency funds or looking for ways to generate income, you know, and, and you can do this an extra hundred dollars a day, an extra five hundred dollars a day, an extra thousand dollars a day. You guys can do it. And I'm seeing people do it. I know people are doing it. And I'm seeing people start with nothing. I'm seeing people who didn't even know how to create an account. And in like 90 days, they're making an extra $100 a month. If you make an extra $100 a month, excuse me, an extra $100 a day. So imagine you make an extra $100 a day. Think about it. That's an extra $3,000 a month. That's $36,000 a year. Right. And so it's all about putting yourself in a position so that you can help your family out. Right. You can't help someone else when you need help yourself. It's kind of like when you're on an airplane, you know, they, they don't they tell you to put on your mask first. Even if you have a baby infant with you, you put your mask on first, then you can help everyone else. And this is basically the same logic that applies to anything else. Like I know we're talking about financial 
preparation and economic preparation, but it pretty much goes the same way. You got to take care of yourself. You can't be drowning out in the middle of a pool and then, you know, save your friend because you yourself are just trying to survive. So, um, you know, and then, you know, depending upon your circumstance, you know, maybe you need an extra five hundred dollars, an extra thousand, maybe even ten thousand dollars right now to keep your family from being evicted out of your house. You know, it depends on the circumstance. So I'm going to leave a link down below for you to be able to get, you know, even if you got bad credit, get it up to, you know, $10,000 in, in cash. Even if you've got bad credit, I'll leave a link for you guys in the description down below. And it's not for everybody. I would use this for emergencies or, you know, if I had a business that, you know, needed a cash injection and, you know, um, you know, this could be a good source. It could be a good source to get some cash in your pocket quickly if you can get a higher return on investment. Um, you know, that's that's all, you know, because me, me personally, I would, you know, no one wants to take out a 7% mortgage right now. Nobody, right? Mortgage rates used to be 3%. Fed Chair Jerome Powell is jacking up the interest rates. Fed Chair Jerome Powell has turned off the money printers, right? So, now, you know, you, you buy a house today at 7%, you're probably, you know, obviously it depends on the size of the mortgage, how much money you're borrowing, how much money you're putting down. But, you know, if you buy a house today at 7%, most people are like, oh my God, that's terrible. You know, of course, historically, 7% is actually a low rate. It's just not a low rate in the short term. In the last 10 years, Interest rates have been lower than 7%. So, but uh, human nature is to forget. Human, human beings forget things quickly. But, you know, ask anybody who bought a, a house back in the 90s, 7% today would be like, oh my God, sign me up, you know? Um, so, but the point is this the rate almost doesn't matter depending upon the circumstance. If you are buying something, that you can flip. For example, if you paid 7%, but you're going to make 50% return on, you in, on your investment, then who cares about 7%? Borrow at 7%, make your 50%, pay the loan back, and you're profitable. And this is, this is basic business, you know? It's like, you know, hard money loans are, are there for a reason. You know, uh, these hard money loan companies, they're available they're there for you know they're they're there for real estate investors in in most cases and these are not necessarily the best rates right but some of the most successful real estate investors that I know of they're taking out hard money loans left and right paying 20% on their loans buying you know $500,000 houses or you know maybe they're taking a hard money loan and they're buying five houses undervalued significantly undervalued for motivated sellers, they have their contractors lined up. They know how to get these repairs made that are going to fix the house up to make it livable and also give them the highest return on investment based on the re repairs that they've identified and the amount of return that they're going to get. So it's like, OK, sure, charge me 20 percent. I'm only going to need it for like six months. So who cares? So it's really like not even 20 percent. It's more like 10 percent. Um, because you only need the loan for say six months and then you go and flip the property and you make 50 grand, right? So it's like, just in, as that example, you know, you might make more or less than $50,000, but the point is, is, you know, interest rates are relative. Interest rates are relative, but I just want to share this information with you guys. Sometimes it's better to just consolidate your expenses. If you move in with somebody, you and your family will be better prepared financially moving forward. Um, you know, I'm going to leave some helpful links for you guys in the description down below, some quick cash access, uh, you know, and again, you know, it's, it's for emergencies only, but I know a lot of families based on the people who have reached out to me have indicated that, you know, Hey Ron, uh, I, I need some quick cash. So, uh, I'm going to leave that for you guys. If you made it this far in this video, drop a like. I really appreciate that. Consider subscribing to the channel. Leave me some comments. Let me know what you guys are thinking. Let me know if you agree or disagree with what I'm saying. Uh, and I'll, I'll see you guys on the next video. Take care and be safe.